What's up, YouTubers, and welcome to today's episode of DRZ Productions. Today with us, we have... Carlos. Uh, Carlos just recently went out and bought a brand new Scar L. I love it. Carlos has been waiting for this Scar for how many months now? Three. Three months. This is the VFC Scar L. Uh, this is fully licensed by F. N. Herschel, the company that actually makes the real Scar L. Everything about it is pretty much to a T when it comes to the uh, FDE color and... It's a one-to-one -one scale of the actual Scar L. This thing is absolutely beautiful, and it's just very aesthetically just pleasing and super cool looking, I think, to any airsofter out there. Uh, we all can appreciate the Scar L. Could I uh, move the bolt? Charging handle. Charging yeah. handle. <laughs> That's there we go. Fully ambidextrous charging handle. Pulling back the charging handle allows you to access the uh, hop-up unit right over there. And on this side, where it's the bolt release for the charging handle and releases the bolt works perfect good and also ambidextrous uh, select fire switch now this gun did not come with the attachments you see on it uh, we went ahead and we put the uh, angled foregrip on the front of it and the mock EOTech out of the box this gun shoots what was it 360 FPS with a very very good fire rate um, very clean sounding gun uh, I mean for what you pay for this is like the go-to uh, Scar L platform. I know I have an Echo 1 variant of it. Also performs very good, but the motor in the VFC series just 100% better than, than the Echo 1 series. Definitely get what you paid for. Yeah, you're, you're getting what you paid for here. Anyway, we're going to move on. Carlos decided to go and pick up a Gates Titan version 2 MOSFET unit, is what I'm going to call it. We picked up the version 2 Gate Titan, and we're going to go ahead and actually slap this inside of Carlos's Scar L because I've been meaning to do a version 2 Gay Titan installation video for a while. So I figured, why not use a Scar L as the perfect gun platform to do it, because it offers a couple challenges that you would come across with any other version 2 gearbox. Installing a V2 style Gay Titan normally requires a bit of uh, a bit of dremeling and sometimes some modification to a gearbox shell. So we're going to go ahead and jump into installing this. All right, so first things first, when disassembling a SCAR H or L, they all disassemble pretty similar, you're going to want to remove this uh, front pin right in front of your magwell. On this series, on the VFC, you actually have to pull the bolt back first and then remove your pin in front of the magwell. Once you get that pin loose, it's not going to come out all the way because it's locked in with a, uh, a little clamp on the inside. Go ahead and pull the front of it down and out, just like that. This will remove the lower receiver completely from the top receiver of the gun. You don't even need to play with the top receiver on this. You can go ahead and put this to the side. So next thing, we need to remove the gearbox out of the bottom receiver of this gun. So we're going to go ahead and take out our motor first. I like to take uh, needle nose pliers and just pick out your female connectors on the end of your motors. So there's our motor. Go ahead and put this motor to the side. Keep it at a place uh, where nothing magnetic will interfere with it. Down to the inside of the motor housing, uh, there's two. Normally, it's a Phillips head screw. Go ahead and uh, remove those screws from the bottom. All right, once you unscrew those, go ahead and remove the uh, your grip from the bottom of the receiver. I like to keep my screws inside there so I don't lose them. Now what we need to do is remove our mag release button. That's simple, all it is is again, it's another Allen key on the underside of your uh, receiver. So use a little micro Allen key. All right, once you unscrew that screw, go ahead. Don't lose the uh, little tiny Allen head screw. Put that to the side. Pull your button off, put that to the side. Get your spring out of there. Push your uh, ambidextrous button all the way through. It's a little bit tight. You just gotta pull and it will come through. All right, now what we gotta do is same thing. There's a little Allen head screw on the bottom of your selector switches. Go ahead and undo that screw. And then once you undo that screw, go ahead and pull it off. And then you repeat the process on the other side. All right, once you do that, go ahead and remove that side. Be careful you don't lose these little ball bearings here. All right, so now you'll notice there's a screw on top of this little block here. You're gonna go ahead and use an Allen key and remove that screw. Once that's loose, go ahead and take it off. I like to leave the screw in that little silver block and then put that to the side. And then repeat that process on the other side. Okay, and lastly, on the back of your gearbox, there is a Phillips head screw here. Go ahead and just unscrew that. This actually screws into your spring guide. And then there's also two smaller uh, Phillips head screws keeping this plate in on the back. 
And you're gonna go ahead and unscrew these also. Once you remove these screws, you can pull up this little uh, this little cat piece and go ahead and put that to the side. Now, I don't know if you can see, on the back of the uh, VFC SCAR series and the ECHO-1 series, they have these little nubs. Uh, these are your positive and negative wire connector nubs because the VFC uh, does not actually have wires that go to the stock. It uses a plate system based on the um, swinging of the stock. All you gotta do is push up on these and they'll come right out and those are loose. And then now you can go ahead and freely, I believe, freely remove your gearbox, your lower from the uh, lower receiver. All right, so once you get it out, go ahead and just remove your lower receiver and put that to the side. You'll notice when you pull it out, these little tiny uh, wheels will fall out of the gearbox. That's part of your selector system, uh, uh, your ambidextrous selector system on a SCAR uh, L or SCAR H. So go ahead and take these little wheels and put them to the side. All right, this part is a little difficult because this requires a very, very small Allen head because the screw in this is super tiny. And you probably can't see it, but it's this little, it looks like a, like a wing on the side of your gearbox. Go ahead and find the smallest Allen head you have possible. And it's kind of unfortunate that most SCAR platforms have such small screws. Remember, do not lose this piece, very important. So once you loosen that, and go ahead and lift up this wing piece. And then once you get those screws undone, go ahead and take these wings and put them to the side. Once you do that, now we can start unscrewing the gearbox. Unscrewing our gearbox. All right, once all your screws are removed, you can go ahead and remove the top part of this uh, gearbox. And I also like to put a screwdriver in the back of the gearbox. Uh, that way the spring doesn't go shooting out the back when we go to open it. Go ahead and take your spring guide, put that to the side, remove your spring, and then go ahead and remove your cover. Wow, this is a clean gearbox. I mean, this is <laughs> sparkling clean, Carlos. I don't think you know how happy. This is actually cleaner than the inside of an LCT gearbox. We can go ahead and remove our gears, but keep our shims, keep the correct shim amount on each of your gear sets. Your tappet plate, your piston, uh, your entire piston assembly you can keep all together. Now you can remove your sector gear, and then we can remove our bevel gear. All right, so we're going to be putting a gate tighten in this. So this requires removing the entire trigger assembly. You won't need anything here except the actual trigger and trigger spring itself. So you can actually uh, go ahead and remove your spring on top of your connector. You can go ahead and undo your, I don't know the name of it, plate or whatever because you will not be needing that. You will want to keep the screw though to your to this piece. All right, now we're gonna push the trigger forward and behind the trigger is a screw holding in our wire harness. And then we can lift out our entire wire harness assembly. Take this out. We're gonna be keeping these nubs though on the end of this wire harness because we're gonna need these to wire to the gate tighten uh, for this style for a SCAR. Oh, you will not be needing your safety mechanism on your gearbox as well. You can go ahead and remove that. And you don't need this piece right here. Once the gearbox is bare, pull out this spring behind our uh, selector plate. And then go ahead and pull our selector plate out. And then again, selector plate we're gonna be needing, so keep that to the side as well. All right, once your gearbox is completely bare, you're gonna wanna go ahead and wipe it down as clean as you can and remove as much grease as possible. This way, again, you don't interrupt any of the optical sensors within the gate tighten unit. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and open up our gate tighten. So this is how the version two gate Titan comes packaged. Very nice packaging, very similar to the version three, um, only again, it's for a V2. It comes with your installation kit, which will have all the screws and washers and stickers you will need for the gate Titan. So now we can go ahead and we can pull that out of the packaging. All right, so this is our gate Titan version two. Very similar to the version three, comes very nicely packaged. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is actually pull it apart so lift the top piece off, pull your uh, your back wire connector off, and then go ahead and close it back up. All right, so sometimes with version two gearboxes, the gate tighten will not fit because certain pieces within the gearbox need to be dremeled out to leave space for the gate tighten circuit board to fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and dremel out all the, uh, all the spaces that we need to dremel, and then we'll be right back. So with a little bit of playing around, uh, we found out that the Gate Titan fits perfectly in this gearbox. Um, 
This side of the gearbox doesn't need any modifications. However, on the other side of the gearbox, we just have to dremel off this little tiny uh, raised bit so that the other side of the gate tighten can fit in just like that. All right, so we're back after dremeling. As you can see, uh, we went ahead and dremeled out that little silver piece right there. So this should fit perfectly in there now. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to screw in the gate tighten. We're gonna open up this little uh, installation kit that it comes with. It will come with the stickers, it will come with spacers, washers, uh, various different sizes, and then it will come with a Dean's uh, adapter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of these washers and we're gonna use that screw that we had left over from our selector plate piece, this little screw right here. And we're gonna start off using the smallest washers we possibly can. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is use a black washer first. So a black washer wants to be the one sitting on the actual circuit board. A silver one wants to be the one on your screw. And then once you do that, go ahead and put it next to the little hole inside the gate tightening. And it literally points out where you're supposed to screw it in. And then once you've got that screwed in and it's secure, you can go ahead and install your trigger assembly now. Go ahead and put your trigger spring back on your trigger and make sure that the uh, plate of the trigger spring sits on the bottom of the gearbox that we don't damage any of the parts within the Titan. And it will sit just like that. Once you do this, we're gonna go ahead and put our gears back in. And then once we have these two gears in, we can go ahead and put the top of the gate Titan cap back on. All right, now that our Titan's installed, we can go ahead and put in our piston assembly. Now make sure you have your tappet spring uh, attached to your gearbox. All right, and now once you have your uh, piston assembly in, we can go ahead and put our anti-reversal latch back in. All right, and once your pinion gear is in, you can go ahead and put your spring and your spring guide back in, and we can close the gearbox back together. Try to be as careful as you can when doing this, because you don't want parts going all over the place. All right, now that we have our gearbox back together, make sure uh, your trigger moves freely, and that your nozzle also moves. But what we're going to be doing, our Titan came with three stickers. We're gonna be taking one of the middle stickers with a black line on it, and we are going to be placing it on the inside of our tappet plate, because this one is clear. And you want to get this sticker as close as you can to the inside of your plate. So if you can see, just like that. And you want the black, you want the black part to be facing that way. And this is on a SCAR type of plate. It's a little bit, uh, M4 type of plates are different, but it's the same square area that you're applying that sticker. So once you do that, you can go ahead and flip it over and we're gonna place our type of plate back on the inside of our gearbox. And what that does is this picks up the sensors on the gate Titan. Yeah, and you won't even need your spring for your type of plate either. All right, once we do that, we can go ahead and put our gearbox back in the lower receiver of our SCAR L. Now this is going to be a little bit difficult because we need to put in the selector plate or the, the weird selector switch style on the SCAR L. So we're going to take, remember our little wing piece, go ahead and slip it through, flip it over, put our other wing nut on, our wing piece, whatever we're going to call that, and then get our micro Allen head and re-screw the bottom of those back. All right, once you screw those micro Allen keys back in is get our little circular disc part. And this part's really, really tedious. There's a little line on top of our wing piece and there's a little line on our tappet plate. You need to line up the same exact lines with our little circle piece, just like that. And at the same time, you need to put the gearbox back into the lower receiver of the gun without screwing up the alignment of that. This may take a while and it's very tedious to do, but I promise you it is possible. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a bit and try to get this back in the lower receiver. All right, so we jumped ahead a little bit. It was a little difficult, but we did get our gearbox finally back in the lower receiver. Um, this was a pain in the butt to get our selector plate lined up, but like I said, you can do it. Um, it just takes some tinkering around to, to get set. Um, and I know what you're thinking, uh, on the back here, we're wired to Dean's and we shouldn't be. We should actually be wired to these nubs here. Uh, we will clip our Dean's off once we're finished programming and switch it to these nubs so that we will be actually connected to Tamiya connectors when we're done. Now what we're going to do is put the motor grip back on, put in our Lonex A2 motor, 
and we are actually going to test everything and make sure our gearbox cycles and we're going to program it as well. All right, so now we got the motor grip back on and the motor is inside the grip and everything should be good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna program it and what we're gonna do is take our little adapter piece that you need to program it. You can get this on eVike for around 30 or if you bought the, uh, the special edition package, it comes with one. Hook it up to your Dean's connector and then you're gonna hook it up to the uh, the micro USB cable we have here. And then from there you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna hook it up to your phone. All right, so when it's plugged in, you'll see a blue light. You're gonna go over. If you haven't already downloaded the Gate Titan app, go ahead and download it and make sure you create an account. When you open it, this is gonna show up. Just click OK. It's gonna tell you that you're connected. It's gonna turn green saying that you're connected. We're gonna go over to sensors and we're gonna check our trigger sensitivity. As you can see, you can adjust it. You can go to one, you can do three. There's five different trigger sensitivity settings. We're gonna go over to fire selector. We're gonna calibrate that. So what you do is you put it in uh, safe, press calibrate. Press start to begin, go to 60 degrees, which is in between safe and semi. You're gonna press next, go to 120, which is in between semi and full auto. Click next. Now you're calibrated. You can go to your uh, your settings. I recommend uh, if you're using a LiPo, make sure you put it to your uh, three stage battery cell and then make sure your LiPo, LiPo protection is on. Oh yeah, and then there is your warning that lets you know when your battery is low you can set that to 3.4 volts. Once you're all set, just exit the app. Blue light means that it's saved. Go ahead and unplug your phone. All right, now our Titan should be all programmed ready to go. All right, now that it's all programmed ready to go, Carlos is gonna go ahead and hook up a battery. You'll hear three short beeps, meaning that everything is tuned in and everything's ready to go. And Carlos, go ahead and give us a couple. So as you can see, the trigger response is really nice on it. And I'll try full auto. Now that is just an outstanding full auto response we have with the Lonex A2 motor and the Gate Titan. All we have to do now is just wire our Titan connector in the back to these nubs right here, and then put the gun back together. Well, we finished uh, putting the gun back together. We had some issues with the wiring uh, because of the way the stock is but we made it work um after a couple attempts though but we got it uh and it shoots fantastic <laughs> thanks for pipping my gun nate <laughs> Alright guys, as you can see, we finished up on Carlos's Scar L. Um, putting the gate tight in it was definitely a bigger challenge than I thought it would be, uh, just in terms of, of the wiring and fitting the wires in the back of the stock. Other than that though, I mean, it was pretty simple and it definitely outperforms, it, it outperforms any other Scar I've heard of right now. The gate Titan definitely, it, it increases performance by at least like 30%. Right now it's shooting 360, uh, both in semi and in full. Um, and that's with 0.25s. If you guys want to go ahead, uh, I highly recommend getting a Gate Titan and putting it in just about any AEG you own. They are just like the next level of airsoft. They're, they're a lot of fun. And if you know enough about tech work, they're pretty simple to install. So I highly recommend it. It's banging. It's banging. Uh, so thank you for tuning into this episode of DRZ Productions. I hope you guys learned some things. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Other than that, like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys next episode on DRZ Productions.